Now, we are all very aware of the current cost of living crisis across the UK and that every penny counts. Joining us today in the studio to talk more about all the support that is available at Citizens Advice is Waylin Wong, who is the Communications Officer for Citizens Advice. Como? Hello, Waylin. Hello. Good Hello. to be back. <laughs> nice to have you back in the studio. Becoming a bit of a professional at this now, aren't you? Well, yeah, I've got way to go, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> now, for our viewers who maybe haven't seen you on the show before, can you give us a little introduction um, as to who you are and what your role is within Citizens Advice? Yeah, sure. So I work for Citizens Advice Cornwall and uh, I work in as the Communications and Research and Campaigns Officer, which sounds very wordy, but it's <laughs> basically trying to get information out to the public and to the media about what we do, but also about what people can do themselves, what, uh, what things to look out for, what benefits you can apply for, things to, uh, actions that you can take. So it's that sort of thing, public information really. Fantastic. And that's an important role because um, a lot of it comes down to awareness and a lot of the time people just don't know maybe what they're entitled to or what support is available out there. So that sort of media role, it, you must be a busy man. That's exactly it. <laughs> and also the goalposts are shifting all the time because yeah, we have new government regulations, new benefits, uh, particularly with the energy situation at the moment. Uh, there's lots of help and support out there, but it needs to be communicated and it needs to be communicated quite simply so everyone can understand it really. So yes, that's right, shifting goalposts. But also, as we know, there's an awful lot of organisations involved in support these days, but they also have an awful a lot of Inevitable, inevitable bureaucracy, really, which people have to wade through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's start right back at the very beginning then, for those who don't know anything about Citizens Advice, um, in, particularly here in Cornwall. Um, can you give me like a simple breakdown of the sort of things you guys support with? Yeah, sure. So, as I we are a local charity, but we're part of a national umbrella organisation. Uh, and all our advice is, is independent, so that's really important. So we're not an arm of government or the council, so we can talk to people independently and confidentially, and it's a free service. We've been around over 80 years now. Wow. So we're still, we're pretty much confident we know, we know what we're, we're talking about. So the sort of areas that we cover, is very, it's very wide ranging. And we always have this little tagline, which is, is really, really good. It's just saying, we're here for everyone. And that's, that's true. You don't have to be, um, you know, really up against it to come and see us. Um, we get people who, are, who have been multimillionaires in the past whose businesses have suddenly collapsed yeah. and they need some help. Uh, right down to, you know, people who are facing homelessness and, you know, the bailiff's coming around tomorrow and they need, need help straight away. So we are there for everyone. And... Uh, it's a very wide range of subjects. We, we, we really rarely turn anyone away, but the, the biggest things that we see, that uh, we help people with in Cornwall are debt and benefits. Right. But there are other subjects that we cover, and a lot of these things are, are quite often interrelated. So debt, benefits, housing, uh, and discrimination, employment, and relate, sadly, relationship breakdown we see quite a lot of as well. Okay. So it's when families uh, or partners suddenly get into difficulties uh, with the relationship, but it's then about the practicalities. How do we divide the property up? Or my partner's being unfair. And, you know, what, what do I do? I can't afford legal aid. So those, those sort of issues. And it's interesting, like you say, how one issue can kind of lead into another one, isn't it? It has that kind of knock-on effect. Yeah, it's really interesting because our advisors, when someone comes in to, the, to, to see us or calls us up, they usually come in with a, a particular issue in mind. So they might come and say, um, I've got a few debts, I'm really struggling to pay them off. So our advisors sometimes dig a little bit deeper and say, well, how co why have you built up these debts yeah. and it might be well my rent has gone up and it's really unaffordable and I'm really worried about it okay so we've now got a bit of a housing issue as well haven't mm. we uh, because if you don't keep up with your rents you, you may end up being being homeless uh, and then it may 
escalate a bit more with a little bit more questioning and um, say, well, you know, this goes back a few years from when I split up with my partner who was, was abusive and then, you know, I lost my job. So, yes, a lot of these things are interlinked. So people come and see us about one issue, but we quite yeah. often find there are other things as well which we can help with. And how do you, like you touched on there, like you're giving out this advice and with everything that the advice changes so regularly, especially at the moment with the cost of living crisis and everything that's going on. How do you keep up to date with giving out the best advice? Like you must have to do a lot of research. This is what our advisors, and I would say our advisors are excellent. They're, they're, they're highly trained and they're very passionate. Uh, a lot of them are volunteers as well. So they're there because they really want to be, but they do, they do have training. But more than that, they have access to some really good resources. So all the information that they use is really up to date. Uh, and they have the benefit of, of working with some of our supervisors as well. So they work as a team. If there's anything an advisor is a bit unsure about, they've got a lot of um, support that they can, they can call on to make sure they're giving the most up-to-date information. Brilliant. And in terms of Cornwall, you know, we're passionate about our hometown here. Um, have you noticed there's been like an increase in a need for that sort of local support? Well, that's, that's certainly the case. And that's one of the strengths, I think, of Citizens Advice, because they're local to every part of the country. We could, in theory, just set up a huge call centre somewhere and deal with everything that way. But we don't. We've kept everything local, where people who need to can come and see us face to face if necessary. Doesn't mean they have to, because we still have a phone service as well and web chat, but it's done by local advisors. And yes, uh, Cornwall, as in every part of the country, has seen a huge increase over the last few months uh, tied to cost of living, everything, cost of living, inflation, energy prices, fuel prices, uh, the, the whole lot really. So yes, yeah. we're, things, are, things are pretty busy at the moment. Absolutely. And the fact that you cover such a range, I'm not surprised it, it's so busy. Um, we touched on the different categories of support that you provide already. Which one is the most feels wrong saying popular but where's the highest need at the moment is it housing in particular or is it um, because of like the the energy and, and things like that yeah well if if we look at the the, the the top things that we're seeing at the moment is is benefits that's pretty much always been the case right. but an interesting trend is we're we're seeing more people who've never um, had to claim benefits before so they've never really been in the benefit system so it's a case of uh, well is there anything I can claim to help my situation? Uh, and then how do I go about claiming it? And then yeah. it may be a case of, I've tried to claim, but I'm hitting problems. What do I do? Can I appeal? So uh, benefits um, will always, I think, be a big chunk of our work. Something that is starting to increase is debt. Now, debt has always been quite an issue in Cornwall. There was a time during, uh, during lockdown when we were seeing fewer debt issues possibly because people weren't being able to go out and spend yeah. so much. So people were actually paying off quite a lot of debt. But what we're really quite worried about now, us and, and other charities, is that people are uh, starting to build up debts again because they can see energy bills going up, rents going up, and they have nowhere else to turn. Uh, as a bit of a sideline, we're also concerned about um, uh, people turning to loan sharks. Right. Particularly in Cornwall, there are certain hot spots where we know loan sharks are active because to a loan shark, it's a business opportunity. Mm. Uh, energy is again, it's, it's an issue that's going up quite quickly, particularly for people on prepayment meters at the moment and people who are off grid and they're not getting, uh, so they're not getting mains gas, uh, but they're having to pay quite high prices for, uh, for their oil and gas deliveries. Yeah. And sort of, again, it, it all comes back down to finance. If it, it has a knock-on effect in every part of our lives, um, you touched on on benefits there. For anyone who's maybe watching today and, and thinking, because I personally didn't realise that Citizens Advice gave advice with benefits, you often assume that that's more sort of job centre, local support. So somebody who maybe is thinking about um, or they're new to receiving benefits, what what advice or what would you say to them? Well, one of the, the easiest things to do is to, if, if 
things are looking tight, uh, just have a look on our website and there's a benefits calculator, which is really easy to use. Uh, you put in your details, obviously it's different for everyone, right. and you can see if you might be entitled to, uh, to any help. So I think that's the first step. Hmm. Very practical. Quite a lot of people can actually claim, uh, a lot of it is online. Uh, it's for ve different benefits have different rules. Uh, some people find the process reasonably straightforward, but uh, quite a few people don't. And that's when people start hitting problems, that's when they, they come to us. So yes, it's interesting what you're saying about the, the job centres uh, and the Department for Work and Pensions. They do actually refer people to us Fine. because we're an independent organisation. We can help guide people through the process, which is a bit harder for the, the Department of mm. Work and Pensions because they're coming at it from a, a different angle and they have set rules and procedures that they have to, to abide by. So, uh, yeah, I think last year, so last year we saw uh, around 9,000, over 9,000 people just in Cornwall and a huge chunk of that was, was about benefits. God, it's huge numbers, isn't it? It really is. Um, what are, obviously on today's show, we are having a main focus on the cost of living crisis. So what recommendations would you give um, in regards to the current crisis and, and you know some of the advice that you're giving out to people at Citizens Advice? Yeah, it's all, it depends on where you are at the moment, really. And as I say, everyone's situations are a bit different. If you're looking to the, the next few months and you're really starting to worry about it, which a lot of us are, um, go on to our website. There are other websites as well that offer this and, and you can do uh, a household budgeting tool, use a household budgeting tool. So you can track, helps you track what's coming in and oh, what's yeah. going out. So that's always a very good starting point. Mm. Okay, if you're not good with IT or technology, come into Citizens Advice, come into the office and we can, we can do it for you. But it's quite simple. So it's one of those simple things that a lot of us have got out of the habit of doing, but it's very easy to do. So yeah, work out what's coming in, work out what's going out, work out some of those things that you might be able to live without, maybe some of the um, um, network subscriptions that you've got that you don't use, uh, maybe gym membership that you don't use. Look at the things that you know, might be regarded as nice to have, mm. but not maybe essential. You yeah. may be paying for things, taking out things that you'd actually forgotten about. That yeah. does happen. You know, it's, it may only be £10 a month or £20 a month. And, uh, you know, you put it to the back of your mind. So budgeting tool, really useful. And it also helps you plan ahead. So you can plan how much you need to spend on heat and fuel, uh, etc. and all the essentials that you need. Uh, if you're getting into a situation where you, you really are getting into debt and you know you're not going to be able to afford the bills coming in, first port of call is to tell your creditors as soon as possible, uh, whether that's the energy company or the council, whoever, and you say, look, I'm going, in, I'm going to get into difficulties here. Can you reschedule my payment? So energy companies have an obligation to come right. up with a scheme that you can afford. So that's really important. They can actually um, install a prepayment meter if that, that fails. So you, you do have the options there, and, and it's really important to, rather than let things build up, and yes. I know it's easy to do, yeah. and hope that it'll go away, it won't go away. You'll just be storing problems up for the future. But even after that, uh, and not all people I know are comfortable uh, with approaching uh, big companies or mm. creditors, it does take a, you know, a little bit of, um, uh, skills sometimes on, on the phone it's or daunting, emails or even writing letters. Uh, if you're not good at any of that, come to, to Citizens Advice uh, or another debt charity and we'll help you through it because what we can do is, is look at the various methods of writing off debt. Uh, there are various schemes where you, you can do that. Sometimes it's, it's not the best option for people. For some people it might be the best option yeah. and that's where our professional debt advisors come in. Worst thing you can do is ignore it. Yes, So of try and get help as soon as you can. And that's one of the things that would really appeal to people because we do lot, see a lot of people who've let things build up and they come in and it's usually, ah, oh, the bailiff's coming around tomorrow. Help, what can I do? 
and you think, right, that's okay, we can try and do something, it's an, it's an emergency situa situation. Yeah. But if you'd come to see us six months ago, we could have got into action and tried to prevent that, that happening in the first place. It's almost starting the ball rolling now. If you see yourself struggling, it's almost get that advice, have a plan in place. Um, I love the idea of that budgeting tool. I think that's, that's fantastic because we're, I think we're all guilty, aren't we, of, of sometimes not checking our bank accounts as regularly as we maybe should. I think we've all got subscriptions and, and probably little direct debits that go out and we think, oh, do I actually need that? It's, it's kind of balancing the priorities, isn't it? I think that's, I think that's it. And when times are, are relatively good, yeah, you know the money's coming in, and you're you're in a, a full, you know bills are, are affordable, and you're getting by, or even maybe putting a little bit of money aside. You're right; it yeah. goes to the back of your head. Say, so okay, you're right. I don't need to worry about those bits and pieces at the moment. Yeah, and in terms of other sort of practical advice that we're giving out, I know you mentioned sort of trying to negotiate with the providers with energy if if you're struggling. Um, what other practical advice when it comes to saving energy and just cutting down costs? would you give i know i personally have, have been definitely cracked down on the amount of heating i've been using at home um have you got any other little sort of tips and tricks yeah yeah if, if, if there's lots of stuff on our, our website um which sort of takes you through all the bits and pieces you can do uh have to be careful though because we know a lot of people do have medical conditions uh and particularly older people or people with uh with babies or young children with conditions have to be a bit careful about saying, oh, just turn the heat down. But, you know, if you're, if you're healthy, uh, turning down the thermostat by one degree can make, over the year, can make quite a big difference. So you could look at doing that. Um, you could use, uh, you could look at uh, cooking meals in bulk so that, uh, you know, you could use a, a, a pot and plan your meals so that you cook uh, and it lasts two or three days. Yeah. So you're not using the uh, the, the uh, gas heat or electric heat. Uh, sorry, gas cooker or electric cooker every day. Look for drafts in the home. I know it's these things sound, things sound sensible, but you know you always surprising them, myself included. You don't actually think about it until you need to. So get some draft extruders. They can make a, a huge difference as well. Uh, see where those pesky drafts are coming <laughs> from. Uh, if you haven't already, you can uh, you can lag the boiler as well. That can make a, a big difference. Again, this is hopefully um, a lot of people may have taken this message on board. But if you do boil the kettle uh, to make tea or whatever, only you boil it for the amount of water you're actually going to use. Yeah. Uh, another tip: if uh, maybe if you're you're living alone and you, you haven't got people coming around that day, you could fill a kettle full, boil it once in the morning, fill a thermos flask, and use that throughout the day, rather than continually on and off, on and off with the kettle. So that's, a, that's another a, tip. That's <laughs> a great, great there are, advice. There, there, are, there, there, are, there are lots of things. And, and again, it, it might be worth, uh, again, if you haven't already, uh, fitting low energy light bulbs uh, where you can. So replace, yeah. if you've got any of the old, older type um, uh, energy eating bulbs, get a, uh, a low energy bulb instead. And just have a, have a look around the house, things that you can, you can do to stop the stop the drafts and basically yeah. electric. Oh, and another one, again, it's said very often, but again, we don't often do it, is turn, turn, your, turn electrical equipment off when you're not using it yeah. and make sure it's not on standby. It's those little things, they all, they all add up and some fantastic tips there. I, I really thank you for, for sharing that and hopefully anyone who's struggling today and who might be watching can sort of learn some little quick and easy handy tips. Final question, um, where can people, I know you've mentioned the website before, um, where can people go for more information or how can they contact Citizens Advice? Right, easiest way is to, uh, if, if you're using text, it's just text the word advice to 78866 and I can leave you with the details. Um, yeah. So that's the easiest way to do it. You text and then one of our advisors will call you back, usually within, within 10 working days. I know not everyone uses text, not everyone's comfortable talking on the phone, uh, not everyone uses IT. There is a lot of stuff on the website, but if you can't use the website, you don't have the technology, or you know, you're, you're, you're nervous about communicating that way, you can come into to one of our offices, uh, you, you can find out uh, when we're open. Again, it's on the website, so if you don't know, you can ask a, ask a friend to look it up for you, and you'll see when, when our offices are open to the public, when you can come in. Yeah, and and talk to an advisor. 
Fantastic stuff. Waylon, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today and for all the advice um, and all, all the valuable bits that you guys do at Citizens Advice. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bryna, back to you.